Hi there, in this video I'm going to do a pass exam question on vectors. In particular, this is a vectors question as part of the further math syllabus. So let's take a look at this question. So the points A, B and C have position vectors A, B and C respectively relative to a fixed origin O as shown in figure 1. It is given that the vector A is the vector I plus the vector J Vector B is given by 3i minus j plus k, and vector C is given by 2i plus j minus k. Now the first part, part A, we need to calculate the cross product or the vector product of B and C. So in other words, let's calculate B cross C. Now let's go back to the paper and pen. Now, if you're not familiar with the cross product, I have created a video on the cross product and I'll provide a link to that video in the description below. However, let me show you how this is done if you're not familiar with the process. Now, to work out the cross product, I usually use the determinant of a three by three matrix. So let me arrange my determinant in order to help me with the cross product of B and C. Now the first row of this three by three matrix are the unit vectors i, j, and k. So always write the unit vectors i, j, and k for the first row of this determinant. The second row of the determinant are the coefficients of i, j, and k in the vector b. Okay, so b comes first. So look at the coefficients of i, j, and k in the vector b and insert these uh, numbers here, here and here. So the coefficient of i in b is 3, coefficient of j in b is minus 1, so put that there, coefficient of k is plus 1, put that here. So it's 3, minus 1 and 1 respectively. Then insert the coefficients of i, j and k for the vector C. So in vector C the coefficient of i is 2, so put that there. Coefficient of j in vector C is plus 1 and the coefficient of k in vector C is minus 1. So the coefficients are 2, plus 1 and minus 1. Insert them here in that particular order, in the order i, j and k again. Now in order to evaluate a 3 by 3 determinant and don't worry if you're not familiar because I provide a link to that video in the description below. But what I usually do is I write the signs associated with the first row and the signs associated with the first row are plus, minus and plus. So I write those signs on top and then that will help me expand this determinant. So to expand it's plus i, so it's plus vector i. And you need to multiply that by the determinant, and it's a determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix. So multiply the vector plus i by the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix. And the elements of this 2 by 2 can be found by ignoring the row and the column associated with i. So if you ignore the row and the column associated with i, you can see the values. So let me place my pens here and here you can see the values minus 1, 1, 1, minus 1. So minus 1, 1, 1 and minus 1, these will be the elements of that uh, 2 by 2 determinant. Same idea, so let's continue. So we have a minus j, minus j, so let's continue along the row, multiplied by the determinant of another 2 by 2 matrix, where the elements can be found by ignoring the row and the column associated with J. So if you ignore the row and the column associated with J, you're going to have 3, 1, 2, minus 1 being the elements of this 2 by 2. So 3, 1, 2, minus 1. And if we continue along the row, so we have a plus K, so plus K, multiplied by another 2 by 2 determinant whereby the elements can be found by ignoring the row and the column associated with k. 
So if you ignore the row and the column associated with k, you have the elements 3 minus 1, 2, 1. So 3 minus 1, 2, 1. Those will be the elements of this matrix here. So let's continue. Let's continue to expand. So we have a plus i from here. Now, when you expand the 2 by 2 determinant, remember the idea. The idea is we multiply the elements along this diagonal first. So if you multiply the elements along the diagonal that I've highlighted in green, minus 1 times minus 1 is plus 1. And you subtract, so you subtract, and then multiply the elements along the opposing diagonal. So if you multiply those elements along the opposing diagonal, 1 times 1 is 1. So let's use the same idea to expand these two determinants, okay, here and here. So minus j, so minus j, open a bracket. So remember the idea, first multiply the elements along this diagonal, highlighted in green. So 3 times minus 1 is minus 3, minus. Then multiply the elements along the opposing diagonal. So 1 times 2 is 2. Let's follow the same idea. So it's plus k, open a bracket, first multiply the elements along this diagonal, highlighted in green, 3 times 1 is 3, minus, then multiply the elements along the opposing diagonal. So 2 into minus 1 is minus 2, but minus 2 times this minus is plus 2. So be careful of that sign change. So if you continue, you have plus i, 1 take away 1 is 0, minus j, minus 3 minus 2 is minus 5, plus a k, and 3 plus 2 is plus 5, and if you simplify this, minus 5 times minus j is plus 5j, 5 times k is plus 5k. So this should be the solution for B cross C. So let's go back to the question. So the next part of this problem, part B is, part B we need to calculate the scalar product or the dot product of vector A with B cross C. So let me show you how to do that. Let me show you how to work out the scalar or dot product of the vector A with B cross C. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the calculation of the scalar or dot product, I have created videos on this with examples given, and I'll give links to these videos in the description below. However, let me show you how this is done. So we have the vector A, which is i plus j. So that is given in the question. So i plus j. And we need to apply the dot or the scalar product of that with B cross C and B cross C we found earlier, which is 5J plus 5K. Now, in order to work out the dot or the scalar product, all we need to do is multiply the coefficients of I, J and K, and then we add. So if we multiply the I coefficients, we have plus one for the coefficient here, multiplied by, there isn't an i component here, so it's zero. Always plus, so remember we're multiplying the coefficients of i, j and k and adding, so always plus. If we multiply the coefficients of j, I have plus one from here, multiplied by the coefficient of j here, which is five. Again plus, no k component over here, so plus a zero, multiply by, and the coefficient of k here is plus five. So remember, multiply the coefficients of i, j, and k, and then add. So let's simplify. One times zero is zero, plus one times five, which is five, plus zero times five, which is zero, 
So that will sum to 5. So that is the solution of part B. So back to the question. So we have another part. Part C is calculate the area of the triangle OBC. So we need to work out the area of the triangle OBC. So back to the paper and pen. Now, in order to work out the area of the triangle using vectors, so remember this formula, to work out the area of the triangle, so area of the triangle, let's name that A. So to work it out using vectors is half of the modulus or the magnitudes of the cross product of B with C. So half the magnitude or the modulus of B cross C will give us the area of this triangle using vectors. Now, we know from an earlier part, from part A particularly, that B cross C, we had 5J plus 5K. So let me make a note that B cross C, we had 5J plus 5K. So we need to take the modulus or the magnitude of that. So let's do that as a side calculation. Now, if you're unfamiliar in terms of how to work out the modulus or magnitude, I have created a video showing you the process and I'll provide a link to that video in the description below. Let me show you how this is done though. So working out the mag magnitude or modulus of B cross C. What we need to do is we need to calculate the square root of the coefficient of i squared. Now we don't have an i component, so 0 squared is 0, plus the coefficient of j, which is 5, and we square, plus the coefficient of k, which is 5, and we square. So it's the square root of the coefficient of i, then we square, plus always the coefficient of j, then we square, plus again the coefficient of k, then we square. So if you calculate this, so let me continue along the line, 5 squared is 25, 25 plus 25 is 50, and I could write that as root 25 times root 2, so 50 is the same as 25 times 2, so I can write it as root 25 times root 2. Root 25 we know is 5. Let's keep it as 5 root 2. So what is 5 root 2? 5 root 2 is the magnitude or the modulus of B cross C. Now remember the formula for the area in this question is half of the magnitude or the modulus of B cross C. So if I continue over here, it's going to be half of... Magnitude of B cross C, we had 5 root 2. So the answer is 5 root 2 divided by 2. So that should be the solution to part C. So for part D, we need the volume of the tetrahedron. So the volume of the tetrahedron, O, A, B, C. So let me show you how to work out the volume of the tetrahedron, O, A, B, C. So back to the paper and pen. So for question two, part D, in order to work out the volume of the tetrahedron, so remember, so remember this formula. So in this example, the volume of the tetrahedron, let me label the volume V, so let me name that volume V. To work out V in this case, it's one over six, so it's 1 over 6, the magnitude of A dotted with B cross C. So for this very example, here's the formula. It's 1 over 6, the magnitude of the dot product of A with B cross C. Now we worked out the dot product of A with B cross C. So from part B especially, so from part B, we worked out A dot B cross C, we had a solution of five. So let me use that solution to help us with part D. 
So in this case, let me just say that we know from B that A, so A dotted with B cross C, so we know that solution was 5 from an earlier calculation. So simply, if I replace that in our formula, we're going to have 1 over 6, so 1 over 6 multiplied by 5. And 1 over 6 times 5, let me leave it as 5 over 6. So that's the volume of the tetrahedron. So that completes part D, and that completes the entire question number 2. So I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy the video, a like rating is very much appreciated. Do plenty of practice related questions and I hope to see you again. Thank you.